Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. So, Hare Krishna, welcome to our evening program, which is very auspicious. Good that you are here, because it's good for, for us. It's very good for the individuals participating. You know, it's difficult to do something better in this damn material world. <laughs> Damn, huh? not not in a bad sense. Damn, but damn is means damned. It's a, yeah, in German it's called verdammt. Huh? It's a, not a great place. Why? Because it's a the material world is a place which has a certain atmosphere. Yeah, it has an atmosphere of atheism. Yes, atmosphere of atheism. And uh, it's infecting everyone. And it's very subtle. And it's subtle and strong. And we are all convinced. We are all con uh, convinced. Even though, oh, I'm not an atheist. I'm not an atheist. Oh, we are. <laughs> we are. Uh, we are atheists. <clears throat> and the, but the, those who are here, uh, those kind of atheists who don't want to be atheists anymore, those who understand, I have a lot of uh, bad things in my heart, in my consciousness. I want to get rid of this. This is the atheism of, of which we are all affected. Because if we wouldn't be, then we would be God conscious. We would be saints. Yeah? We would be God conscious. Lovers of God. Lovers of the Lord. And there were a couple of those examples in history, right? In different religions and traditions, you had some very outstanding personalities. And they showed by their, by their example, by their behavior, by their character, that they are different. Yeah? And they were all talking about an, an reality which is beyond, an entity which is beyond, and state of consciousness which is beyond. And very often they did some wondrous things, wonderful things, so there was something to it. Uh, this was, these were those people who, who made it, right? Who made it. So as long as we are not like that, then we are still on the material plane. We are convinced because consciousness creates reality. That means we are convinced of the matter and we create a material world. And we act in a material way. And we have material thinking and all that. So this is atheism. Atheism is not a belief. Religion is not a belief. You know? it's, a, it's a lifestyle. It's how you act. It's what you do. So what is our activity? In that sense, there are two poles, two extremes of the activity. One is selfless. You don't do it for you at all. Completely selfless. And the other one is completely selfish. These are the two extremes. And this is theism and atheism. Atheism is selfish where you don't, we don't understand there is an other entity for which, for whom, all activity is actually meant. Actually, any activity an individual can do is not meant for the individual. The soul, the pure soul, is actually an entity which is kind of turned outwards itself. It has an object of this perception and an object of where the, um, the, the activities are intended to, yeah, to, to be for someone else. This is actually the nature of the soul. It's acting away from it. Yeah? So this is selfless. So every activity an individual can do, a soul can do, is actually meant for someone else, in service to someone else. But if this is turned around, an entity only acts for himself. Only. Yeah. <clears throat> so in that sense, we can measure how far have we progressed in our development of our spiritual consciousness. How much are we conscious? You know, it's not a belief. It's not a religion. That's a belief. What I believe. This is wrong. We think here in the West especially that religion means a belief. That what you believe. 
and this kind of separate from what you do. But actually, this is not what Vedas teach. Bhagavad Gita, when you read this, it's actually not what you believe, not at all. It's what you do. What you, what you, what you do. This is the, 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 the factor. This is the distinguishing thing. This is the thing. What, what are you doing with your life? So if you say, oh, I, I, I believe in God, I'm a very good person, this and that, and, but you don't do anything, it's in one sense useless. This is not religion or dharma. The word is dharma in Sanskrit. It's dharma. Dharma means like nature, duty, and all that. Yeah. So we should measure ourselves on this scale. How selfless am I actually? And there are three stages of activity or th three sta levels where we can act. One is on the mental plane, what you think. Then on the speech plane, what you say, vocal plane, what are you saying, what are you talking about? And then on the physical plane, what are you doing? So these are the three stages where we can act. Thinking, speaking, and acting, doing. So what is the object of our thinking, speaking, and uh, acting? For whom is it meant? What is the goal of it? Right? What is the goal of it? And we can check out, we should check ourselves. And we should come to a shocking result. <laughs> we should come to a shocking result that actually a majority of the things I think, I say, and I do are not meant for others, but they are meant for purely for me. And this should shock us. us yeah? This shouldn't be, no, it's normal. This should shock us. Yeah? We, we should come to a shocking result. If you don't come to a shocking result, it means you're an illusion. Because then you think, oh, I'm thinking only about the welfare of others. I'm only speaking uh, in praise of the others and I'm only acting for... Yeah, this is called illusion. <laughs> this is not... We should admit and see, recognize our egoism. We should see it. We should see it. Why? Because we should get rid of it. If we, 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 we push it under the carpet, yeah, it's not there, I'm good, all that. Yeah, we're bewildering ourselves. And then that's way we can never be happy. Never can be happy. Because the only way how to really be happy is in the selfless activity. And one very easy way how to do the selfless activity is, and as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, man mana bhava mat bhakto madhyachi mang namaskuru ma me vaishya si satyang te pratichani priyosine me. Think about me, he says. Always think about me. Always think about Krishna. Worship me. Do some, uh, yeah, worship me. Offer your obeisances to me like this. So thinking about Krishna is actually very nice. It's very easy. It needs, at first, in the beginning, it needs one thing. It's called um, sambanda. The Sanskrit word is sambanda. Sambanda means connection. Sambanda gyan, it said. Gyan means knowledge. Uh, the knowledge which, which connects you, how you are able to hear and think, meditate about Krishna. So what is this? It means to understand what is Krishna, what is Krishna, what is God. And in very short, we feel, we feel we can, because it's a long topic, but in very short, as Prabhupada says, Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. <laughs> what does that mean? That means <clears throat> there is a perfection, there's something perfect. Okay, there's something perfect. This world is not perfect. No, it has limitations. But there's something perfect. First, we, <clears throat> we recognize that. We state that. And what is that perfect? In one sense, I would say there are only two ways how to define the perfect. And they're opposed to each other. Two definitions which are going in different directions. And there are different schools or philosophies who are either on this or that side. On defining what is this perfect and then they act to realize it two sides. And both of these directions you can go are go away from our momentary situation. Our momentary situation is we are humans in this material universe, in this material world. And we can only define the perfect from our point of view because how could you do else? You're only an individual and you have a subjective way of defining, of thinking, of seeing things. So we define out of our understanding of our perception. So meaning, the perfect is defined 
out, so to say, of our reality. So something, so we put this reality we can perceive and we know in kind of relationship to the perfect and they measure it. Okay, someone, can you kind of follow? So meaning we can only use that what we have, what we see, what we know, what we perceive in defining the perfect. We cannot do other way around. We, can, we, can, we are forced to, we cannot think out of the box in that sense. We cannot, th how you want to think out of the box? You cannot because you are limited to this situation, this body and this mind, all that. So, so how we can define then the perfect from our experience? So there are two ways how to define it. One is in stating this perfect is that what is not in our experience. Let's say like this. The perfect is that what is not in our experience. Everything we can perceive, what is perceivable, what, what is thinkable, this is not the perfect. The perf because the perfect is the other. The perfect is the other. The, there's the physical and the metaphysical. Yeah? So the perfect is the other. So whatever is here is not the perfect. So it means you define the perfect in this direction through a negation. You say whatever here is, it's not the perfect. The, uh, the perfect is the complete other. You negate the reality which you perceive. And you say this, this negation is the perfect. Because that what you perceive is not the perfect, it's the material. So you have to say this is the opposite. Okay? Kind of? So this is one way of defining and this is not our way of defining. This is only partially our way of defining. Our way of defining the perfect is to idealize the perceivable reality. The perfect is a positive perfect then. It's not a negation of what is this world. The perfect is not what is not this. <laughs> yeah? The perfect is the ideal of that what is our existence in this material world. The perfect is the perfect of the perfection of a perceivable reality. Idealization of this world. Okay, this is a positive way of defining the perfect. It's a positive perfect. The one is the negative perfect. Whatever there is, what's, and both of them actually have the same conclusion. The, the perfect is not this. No, the on, uh, only difference is the one goes in this direction in negating. Whatever this is, it's not the perfect. It must be the complete negation. And the other thing, no, whatever this is, is not the perfect, no. But the perfect is the perfection of existence, perfection of experience, perfection of being. Not a negation. It's a positive, an idealization of our reality. This is the perfect. And this is our way of seeing things. Okay? So, and one interesting example is sense perception. Right now we have sense perception, right? We see, we hear, we smell, we want all that. We can perceive with our senses. If the perfection would be a negation, that would mean an elimination of our sense perception. If sense perception is not perfect, is material, and the spiritual or the perfect is the non material, then sense perception, which is material, is on the perfect level not existent because you have to negate it. So it means seeing is material, the perfection of seeing is being blind. Yes? Understand? <clears throat> now we can see the material world. We see things. Material world is material, is limitation, is maya, not perfect. The perfection in the negating way would mean not seeing. Non-matter is perfection. Seeing is an aspect of material world. Non-seeing is perfection, meaning being blind. That would be a conclusion of a negation of this reality. Our way of seeing is different. When we say the perfection is an idealization of the world, seeing is an aspect of the world, then is an idealization of seeing is the perfect seeing. So you can see more, not less. You can see more, not less, on the perfect level. Meaning our seeing capacity we have right now and our 
capacity of experience, what we have right now, is a limitation. Meaning you take away the limitation, it's not that you don't experience anymore, you don't see anymore, you are not anymore. No, you are in a perfect way. You see more, you experience more. This is our way of seeing. So now to Krishna. So how does Krishna fit in this picture? Krishna fits in this picture because Krishna is the entity which is the ideal and perfect being. According to this definition of perfection, there must be an absolute perfect entity, being with perfect experience, perfect sensual experience, perfect consciousness, perfect knowledge, perfect individual experience. And this is Krishna. This is Krishna. There's a person and a person, because a person has experience. A non-person has no experience. A non-person has no sense perception. So Krishna, in that sense, from a philosophical point of view, is completely legitimate. Completely. How he looks and that he plays on the flute, which is wonderful, amazing, this is in detail. But this is more the def ground basic definition. So this entity, Krishna, is the perfect being, the ideal being, the idealization of being, is absolute, and his sound representation, or, or let's say like this, information, <clears throat> information of Krishna, about Krishna. If we perceive the information, if we get the information, if we know the information, it makes us similar to Krishna. The word information means to form, to shape, inform Informare, from, from Latin also, right? informa, that what forms you, what shapes you, inform, form, formen in German, said formen, no? information, form, that what forms you, what is it forming? It's not form our body, <laughs> it's not forming the physical, it's forming the subtle. Yeah? So the information of Krishna forms us in a way that we become similar to Krishna. Yeah, we get the, no, the substance, we get the same substance as souls. We get also our idealization. Yes, we get our idealization. Krishna's idealization, ideal position is unfailable. It's called uh, akshara. Akshara, he cannot fall down. He cannot be not ideal. He cannot be not perfect. But we have the tendency of falling. We can forget. We can be in illusion right now. We are. But through the information of Krishna, when we perceive this, it's called Krishna Katha. Krishna Katha means the yeah, topics about Krishna. We unveil our ideal existence. Where we have perfect sense perception, perfect seeing capacity, perfect thinking and all that. Everything is ideal. Free. Then we are free. So we don't negate us, we don't kill us, right? The negation is like a spiritual suicide. You kill yourself. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, it's not that. Yeah? It is an, 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 an uh, what does it say in English? Veredelung. This is actually the spiritual process. Veredelung, it makes you refine. It's a refinement. Spiritual pro process is a refinement of the individual. Refine. Refine. Become very, very um, auspicious, very special. So the, the knowledge about Krishna, so this is what Krishna says here, and this is the way how we can practice every moment the, how to become free from this self-centricity, which is this atheism I was talking about, where we only think about ourselves, act for ourselves, think about, yeah? When we think about Krishna, we turn it around, we think about Krishna. So the thing about Krishna does one thing, it makes us aware of Krishna, it gives us knowledge of Krishna, it makes us conscious of Krishna, and so this we become very uh, attached to Krishna. It, uh, it helps us to become free from egoism, we think about someone else, not about our, ourselves. And the thinking about Krishna makes, spiritualizes us, because the information of Krishna is also spiritual, and it transforms us, we get transformed, we get purified. Like if you have an iron rod, piece of iron, 
which is very hard and cold. And you take it and you put it into fire, in a really, really hot fire. And after some time, it gets really hot. It even gets liquid. It takes on the quality of the fire. It doesn't have the, it doesn't have the, has the quality anymore of the metal. It's not hard anymore and cold. It becomes soft and hot. And you can do with it the same as you, what you can do with the fire. You can burn things. You can take the heat like that. Same way if we, we are now hard and cold <laughs> as material beings. And we step into the fire of Krishna consciousness in hearing about Krishna, chanting, doing all that. It's like we go into fire and we get this heat. We get infected by this environment, by this nature. And we get spiritualized. Yeah? We can transform from the material to the spiritual. How is this experience? This sounds all pretty and nice. But how is, where is the proof for that? Very practical proof is that you make, have an experience. You will experience something. And the two symptoms, there are many symptoms, but uh, let's, I want to take two which are, have a strong psychological effect. Two things which are symptomatic for the truth of this assumption is you experience freedom and happiness. Two things. Freude und Freiheit. In German, Freude, Freiheit. You experience, a, you have, will have a sense of freedom, inner freedom, which makes you so free that you feel really like a bird in the sky. Aloof. Even, you're still here, still there, but aloof of things. Quite distant. Distant, but not uninterested. Distant, but not otherworldly or somehow yeah, on like very spherical or something. No, you're down on earth with your feet but still you're distant. You're not affected by this material world. Freedom. You become very free from all that is material. And you will feel a deep and in the beginning it's kind of like a hue of bliss. A hue of bliss. <laughs> it's a hue of bliss. And the more you progress, the hue gets like a stronger. Hare Krishna. Uh, the hue gets like stronger and stronger. It gets a little blow, like a soft spring wind, which is moving a bit the leaves in the, in the trees. And then it gets a little stronger, and, this, and everything bends a little bit more. And the wind of this happiness gets a strong, uh, or, uh, or, or how's it said, storm, right? <clears throat> and then we are moved a lot. We are moved, very much moved by spiritual emotions. <clears throat> so this experience we need, and this spiritual experience we get if we absorb ourselves, absorb ourselves in this Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada always calls it Krishna consciousness. The spiritual activities. How, what, what do you have to do? Yeah, you have to connect. You have to connect your consciousness. You have to do it. You have to be there. You have to really do it. Not think about this and that. You have to really be in the moment. You have to be in the moment. And many things we do here is connected with hearing. It means you have to hear attentively. Our mind has the tendency of going all over the universe. Our mind wants to travel all over the universe. It's everywhere, but not here. And this is how we distance ourselves from us. And we carry it away. So we have to bring ourselves in this moment, here and now. Not tomorrow, not yesterday. Not outside or far away. Here and now. Yeah. And when we practice this of consciously being here and now, being giving attention to that what is important in this here and now, which is exclusively and solely or only the spiritual sound vibration, especially if you chant the Hare Krishna mantra. This is the best example. You're sitting there, you're saying this Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. And this shows already you should be here and now. And you should give attention to the sound vibration. And not 
travel all over the universe in the past and the future, right? Thinking about what happened and this and that and think what will come. You waste your energy because the here and now is the relevant moment. So you bring yourself in the here and now in this moment and give, your, give, your, give the attention to where it should be, to the spiritual sound vibration. And the interesting point is the moment is a glimpse of eternity. The reality, which is an eternal sphere, is an eternal moment. There is only the moment. In the spiritual world, there is no past and future. There is none, because there is no time. Meaning everything is the moment. Everyone there is in the moment. To be in the moment is to be in reality. It's meaning to be in eternity. So the moment, and really only the moment is a connection to the eternal sphere. And it's very difficult to catch the moment. And very difficult because our mind is so quick to go in the past and the future. Because you want to catch the moment, but you're too slow, and when you catch it, it's already past. <laughs> it's already gone. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's already gone. And if the mind is not trained, it's only in the, in the past and the future. We will always run after the moment, but being running after the moment being, meaning you're always in the past. So the moment is very subtle and it's very fast. It's very tricky. Yeah? So we have to be, how, how to catch the moment then? How to catch eternity then? In being very attentive. So when we chant Hare Krishna Mantra, it should be there in every moment, moment meaning being with every sound we produce in the moment. This is kind of the thing, how you grasp the, grasp the moment, because you say Hare. And when your consciousness is there with the Ha on the Re, you are directly in the moment, because the sound is right now, is only in the moment perceivable. Right? It's only here in this situation, in this millisecond, whatever it is, perceivable when you listen to it. Ha! Ha! So you, you put your consciousness inspiration and you're right in the moment too. So you hear the sound vibration and every word you produce, you hear it. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And you're completely focused and you will go through your mind. You go through your mind, you transcend the mind. And this is a wonderful experience. Most amazing. Because we are whole life, we are conditioned by the mind. Actually, we know nothing else but being conditioned by the mind. So to get a glimpse of what it means to be not conditioned, to be the, above the mind, is very amazing. And this you can do through this Hare Krishna mantra. And much more, you get to know Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God, who is not different from the name. So it's a very interesting process. So I want to end on that point. We have a lot of philosophy and many books and much is written, much is said. But in the, by the end of the day, it's about experience. We need the experience. We need this Krishna experience. And you will get it very easy by being attentive. Because attention is also a sign of a respect and actually of love. Right? You give attention to someone or something what you appreciate. And you ignore what you think is not important, what's not worth. Like if you're with someone who appreciate very much, you give lots of attention to. You hang out on every word, you're observing, you're very sensitive, what does he or she want or need, and you respond to it. Yeah, attention is a sign of, of appreciation, of love, actually. So we should be very attentive in our spiritual activity. And because Krishna is a person and not in principle, he's a principled person, but he's not a principle, he will respond towards your attentiveness in showing himself, revealing himself. And I want to end on this point. Krishna plays on a flute. Think about that. Pretty amazing. He's playing on a flute. Shila Brahu Padake. Nitai Gaur Premanandi. Some question? Comment? 
everyone agrees? Good. <laughs> Silence means agree. Nice. Okay, let's uh, sing two, three mantras to make us first uh, aware of Krishna's beauty of sound vibration. Krishna is the sound, Krishna is the music. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओ रंगा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे